in-memory parallel execution. Now, if we have time, I think it's going to be pushed over to a later session, we'll be talking about this in greater detail because this is to do with um, direct I.O. and direct I.O. serial direct I.O. as well as parallel direct I.O. into memory. Now, parallel execution and memory usage. Okay, many developers never really understood what was happening with parallel pulsable scans. And this is, but quite simply, when you run a parallel pull table scan, the object gets checkpointed. And I have known databases that were crippled by this. So you scan a table. How does a parallel scan work? Your server process reads blocks from disk into your PGA. Now, if data has already been read from disk into SGA and modified, but not yet been written back to disk, clearly the data on disk is out of date. So for that reason, any parallel query, wham, database writer goes mad, the object gets checkpointed to disk. So a query causes disk writes. Yeah, this comes as a bit of a surprise to some programmers who don't realize it. Uh, in a rack, by the way, this is even more disastrous, because in a rack, you run your parallel query on one instance, and every instance in the cluster has to checkpoint the object. It's pretty bad. Then, and only then, your parallel execution servers read the blocks from the data files into your PGA. You bypass the cache. That's what direct IO is all about. Normally it's a good thing, but the problem comes that many statements will scan the table repeatedly. I've seen some extraordinary statements in OLTP as well as data warehouse systems, where one statement may have to scan the same table you know, half a dozen, a dozen times. As you get self-joins, the same table referenced many times. And this isn't necessarily just dimension tables, it can be fact tables as well. And with the older mechanism, if you scan the table 10 times, you checkpoint the table 10 times, you read it from disk 10 times. There's no sharing of data across sessions either. Now, we have a new technique, enabled automatically, no change to the software. Parallel reads can now be buffered in the SGA. So, to see how this actually functions, again, guess what? It's our old friend, parallel degree policy. If that is set, into, set to auto, then this mechanism can be automatically enabled. So, if I connect Scott, we already connect, I connect to Scott Tiger, I'm just going to I'm actually clean my buffer cache. Now, what we should see shortly is that we have the ability to cache and um, having we started the database, the database buffer cache will basically be empty. So if I run a simple query, Yes. And so let me see just spot. And this simple query here, remember the view read all the BH, we're not familiar with it, tells you the blocks like the database blocks and actually in memory at this moment. So all I'm doing here is saying what tables what blocks of the emp table, scott.emp, are in fact in memory right now. And of course there are none in memory out of all. Now, we'll go back to the old technique, go to the system set, and go back to manual, to the pre 9 technique, parallel degree policy equals manual. Do a full table scan. So, set, scan from emp. Full table scan, theoretically of 10 billion rows, given that I've faked the situation. And how many blocks are actually in memory? One. One block of that is in memory. So what's going on? Enable the tracing facility. And we can see that what's actually happened. I have to do five physical reads to scan that table. Five physical reads. Do it again. What do I get? Five physical reads. And that is because my scans are always reading from disk. Now, note the automatic degree of parallelism, by the way. 
It's a bit silly for what I physical read, so the optimizer doesn't know that, but I long to it. If we then go to auto, right, what happens now? Fly physical reads, do it again, zero. And this is like magic. So we've no change to the application server to the application, repeated scans, zero on AO. And if you look at what's actually in memory, oops, you can now see that there are indeed six blocks. The entire table is cached in memory. And that's what our final parallelism new feature is. Parallel reads are buffered in the SGA. The algorithm, I did all the reverse engineering I could on the algorithm, by the way, but Oracle hasn't published anything. But the algorithm ensures the SGA is not swamped by full table scans. Uh, it appears to mark off a certain proportion of the buffer cache and be observing the work involved by the sessions on the buffer cache and reserves a certain proportion for full table scans <clears throat> while making sure that it doesn't overpopulate the buffer cache of full table scans and impact on other people. The first scan, of course, has to check one of the objects and read from this. There's no getting out of that one. But from then on, well, if you scan the same table 10 times in one statement, hey, you know, your first one will come from disk, the rest from memory. If your table is umpteen gigabytes and the buffer cache isn't big enough, the algorithm appears to cache the most popular blocks. Everyone then gets the benefits. You know, so one guy takes the hit for the team. And this can give you huge results in reducing this read and write activity. So those three features, which were in memory parallel execution, parallel state and queuing, automatic degree of parallelism, that's the first new feature that got me really excited and behind the back of the application, it can give you huge benefits.